Hi guys, we're here for part two of Ask Us Anything and I actually filmed this before and then I watched the video and I was talking about me and our food and I had a look of disgust on my face the whole time, which is okay, but I thought if my me and our friends watched it'd be so rude. So I'm refilming. So today we're talking about Myanmar. So we'll get right to the question. So the first question is, what do you love the most about Myanmar? And I'm gonna be honest and say Myanmar is a hard country to live in. Probably not the hardest, definitely not the hardest. But what we love about the country is the people. So the people are kind and they are welcoming and they're helpful. And I don't know if you know about the history of Myanmar, but they recently just had sanctions lifted, which means that they have been under a lot of government oppression for years. And so the fact that they're kind and welcoming and still have a good outlook on life, I think says a lot about them. And we also love the teachers at school and just getting to know them because they are Myanmar people. So that's been really fun. So we love the people. Okay, what's the best part of living in Myanmar? For me, the best part other than the people is definitely the market where I get fresh fruit and the flowers. They're really cheap here and I can get those across the street. So it's nice to have that redeeming thing here because a lot of things aren't easy here. Um, so I do like the market. Okay, what is something that surprised you about living in Myanmar? The first thing that surprised me, well there's two things. Um, the mold. So pretty much every building you look at is moldy outside and inside. A lot of them are moldy inside. Um, yeah, it's humid here and they don't do the best job of upkeeping buildings, so it was very moldy. And the second thing that surprised me was how close everything is together. So I kind of felt claustrophobic when I got here. Um, I came from Oklahoma and Kansas where you can see out for miles and miles and then you get here and you turn left and right and it's just like a wall or a building. So that was a little overwhelming for me, but our apartment is on the 11th floor and so I can see really far out. So I think God knew I needed that view, so I'm really thankful for that. Okay, oddities or difference between Burma and home. Okay, so the first one is food. Okay, and I'm not going to have a look of disgust, but food is very different here. Um, so I think one of the main dishes here is fish paste. It's fermented and I've never eaten it because I can't get over the smell. Dave's tried it and he said it's not terrible. Um, so yeah, they have a lot of that. They boil a lot of their food. Um, and to be honest, I don't eat a lot of the food here just because I don't want to be sick. I don't trust the street food. Um, one of the foods I do like here is called San Pu, and that is kind of like a rice porridge, and they put chicken on it on top of the porridge, and then like cilantro and sometimes lemon, and kind of like um, fried breadcrumbs. So that's actually really good. So I might make that for some people when we get home. Um, me and our traditions, what's different? I'm going to say almost everything is different. Um just how they operate life, how they get married. They have arranged marriages here, mail-ordered brides here. I don't think arranged marriages are bad. I've met some people where it's done from Christian homes and the marriages are actually really good. Um, but sometimes the way it's done here is it's a surprise to the kids and it's not always wanted. Um, so that, that was different for me and it's, it's somewhat normal to them. So that is a different tradition. Okay, their dress. Um, I'll probably do a whole post about their dress because it's very unique. But basically their traditional dress is called a longi, which is a very long skirt. Um, so men and women have them. They look different. Um, their ankle length, they're kind of straight. So the men is just this huge piece of cloth and they wrap it around and tuck it in. So that's how the men wear theirs. And then the women's, it's not as big. It's kind of a wrap, and it has like a string, like on your shoe where you can tie it, and then that gets folded in. 
Um, and a lot of the women get them made where they have a matching shirt and skirt. And everyone wears them here. So it's just a common clothing. And it's they've worn it for thousands of years. So that's their traditional dress. Um, their cooking methods. So I haven't been in a lot of homes, but... Um, we went to Bagan, they had an outdoor kitchen, which was neat, and they cooked under like coals, and sometimes they cook in bulk, so they have these huge, huge pans, and they put all the stuff in it, and they grill a lot, kind of, and by grill, I mean they have meat that they put in broth and boil it, all to show you a picture sometime, guys, and places to visit, so a lot of the places you visit here are going to be something related to Buddhist or Buddhism. So they have a lot of huge temples that are have like a reclining Buddha or a huge Buddha made of marble or the famous um, temple here in Myanmar is called Shwedagon Pagoda and it's famous because it has supposedly eight hairs of Buddha. So it's probably the most famous temple. So most of the places you visit, it's going to have something to do with Buddhism. Transportation. I'm going to do a post on this too, but you can walk. You can take a bus here. You can take a train. You can take a taxi. Um, a lot of times Dave and I walk because everything's probably two to three miles from us, and it's actually faster than a taxi. So with sanctions that got lifted in 2012, a lot of cars have been imported and the streets cannot handle the amount of cars. So traffic is really, really slow. So a lot of times we just walk. Um, so yeah, and they have different transportation. So I think one thing that was different, they have ferries. And it's not the kind that go over waters, but a ferry would be like a pickup truck. And on the back, they'll put a tarp on it. And then they put two benches on like the side. And so you have the benches full and then people cram in the middle and then people stand on the outside ledge of the truck. So that is uh, a normal mode of transportation here. And actually a lot of the kids that come to school come in on a ferry. So you can put a lot of kids in one of those ferries. And we definitely pray for safety for the kids a lot because it's kind of crazy. Okay, what's going on at school in Myanmar? Well, currently we're on summer break, so Dave and I haven't been in Myanmar, but I know the school is rearranging the classrooms, and they have about, I think, 25 to 30 more kids. So they're definitely making new room, getting everything ready. And then this upcoming year, I'm going to have my own class of four-year-olds. So I will teach a class and have a co-teacher, and I'll be training her and then I'll slowly phase out and then in November when I'm gone she can just take over and that will be nice to have too because we'll have to do visa runs and then when family comes in I can just turn the class over to her um, so I'll definitely share more about school this year since we've been there more and feel a little more comfortable and have my own class um, so that is really the questions that you guys had about Myanmar if you have any more, please feel free to email me or leave a comment. And thanks for listening.